Hey YouTubers and Facebook friends, welcome to a little Friday Night Fright video. Um, I just recently did a video on DC's reprint titled Black Magic, which reprinted Simon and Kirby's uh, select stories from their 1950s work on a prize pre-code horror comic called Black Magic. Um, so I thought uh, maybe I would actually do a little review of um, my collection of another prize pre-code horror title, and that is Frankenstein. Now, Frankenstein originally started off at prize in the 1940s as a kind of horror comedy comic book um, drawn by artist Dick Briefer. It lasted until 1949. I think it ran 17 issues. Um, then its popularity had waned and the title was canceled. But the rise of horror comics in the, in the early 50s um, precipitated Prize to uh, revive the title as a sort of straight horror book. Um, starting with number 18 which didn't hit the stands until 1952. So I do believe that Dick Briefer started work on it, obviously, in, in 1951, but it didn't hit the stands till I think, March of 52. So I don't have number 18. But what I do have is number 19, and that's what you've been looking at here, obviously. And what's kind of cool is that house in the background reminds me of the house from Adventures into the Unknown number 1, which came out in 1949, the same year that the, the comedy version of Frankenstein was canceled, and that was in, by American Comics Group. Although, you know, you might just argue that looks like any old sort of haunted house. So anyways, there is number 19. Here's number 20. Get a sense of briefer style here. Pretty cool, I think. The briefer has a very, very cool style. I like his inks. Moving on. 23. Um, something I might want to mention is Prize and Briefer had a little challenge in that <clears throat> they couldn't make Frankenstein look like exactly like the Boris Karloff, Jack Pierce makeup of the 1930s film version of Universal Frankenstein. Uh, Universal would definitely hit you with a cease and desist and maybe worse. So they had to make him look gruesome, similar, but just different enough so that they didn't get sued. I think they did a pretty good job. Into 1953 here, number 24. I've noticed this is a recurring theme in many horror books. The monster looking at its own reflection in water. Or I shouldn't say books, uh, I would say in horror pieces of art. I've seen Wrightson do it several times. Uh, number 25. Hey, <laughs> got that for 15 bucks. What a deal. I've been collecting these for a long time, folks. You'd never find that for $15 now. Number 26. Number 27. I really like this mummy cover. Really cool stuff. That's not that great a grade. Number 28. Kind of an interesting cover. Various panels with lots of words. Not really my favorite type of cover, but. Number 29. I always like the theme of the artist working on something and the, the monster comes off the canvas. Number 30. 1954. Here's another panel cover. Number 32. Number 
death clock. I like these covers more, with just the big solid splash looking picture. Death O'Clock, I guess I should say. Number 33, which I think is the last of all these. And I would be right. If you can find it, get this. This is volume six of Roy Thomas Presents by PS Art Books. It's a hardcover. This one has a foreword by Donald Glute. Okay, I scored this for seven dollars, man. Half price books. But Glute does a great, great scholarly look at the transition from humor to horror on this title. So yeah, if you can find this, purchase it. It reprints let me see here. Sorry for the mess, folks. My kid's been making slime. Um, there we go. These issues here, 18, 19, 20, 21, as far as the horror stuff goes. So anyways, hope you're all having a fearful Friday night. Thanks for watching, peeps. Later.